Good morning, my name is Chris Teutsch. I work at University of Kentucky's Research and Education Center where I'm the new forage extension specialist. And I want to talk to you about frost seeding clover into pastures this morning. Clover is a very important part of grassland ecosystems because it brings nitrogen from the air, which is 78% nitrogen gas, into the soil and allows it to be used by plants in that pasture. It also is an important mitigation strategy for tall fescue toxicosis. So getting a good stand of clover in your pastures is essential. And what I want to talk about this morning is how we do that with frost seeding. With frost seeding, what we do is broadcast that clover seed onto the soil surface and allow freezing and thawing cycles in the winter months to incorporate that seed into the soil. And then that seed can germinate and come up. There's a couple key things to remember that it will help you be successful with frost seeding. And the first one is, is you want your pastures to be closely grazed when you frost seed. You don't want a lot of residue on top of that soil surface. And that allows that seed to get to the soil. So close grazing in late winter is very important to successful frost seeding. You don't want a lot of residue on that soil surface. One of the key practices that will enhance the success of frost seeding is to reduce and remove residue in late winter. We usually do this by hard grazing in late winter. Uh, in this demonstration area at the University of Kentucky's uh, Research and Education Center at Princeton, we've actually removed the residue with the lawnmower. On the right hand side you can see that we've clipped these plots and removed the residue. On the left hand side we have uh, not removed the residue. When we clip and remove that residue, it's going to allow that clover seed to reach the soil surface and be incorporated by the freezing and thawing cycles as we go into late winter and early spring. Um, the second one is that you want to seed that clover in a timely manner. You want to get it in early enough so that you have adequate time for the freezing and thawing cycles to incorporate it. Usually that's going to be anywhere from the first week of February to the last week of February. The ideal time would be a little bit earlier so you have more frosting uh, heaving cycles to incorporate that seed. So the, the third big practice to get that seed for successful frost seeding is um, to control competition after grazing. This is where a lot of frost seeding stands fail at because we don't control that competition. Those seedlings are new, they're trying to develop a root system, they're fighting that existing sod for light. So getting in and grazing those stands after we frost seed them is a really important management strategy to be successful. A lot of times people are afraid that they're gonna damage the seedlings by grazing. And you will damage a few seedlings, but if you don't control that competition, all that established sod will shade out those seedlings and you'll have a stand failure. So the ideal management practice is, is to go ahead and frost seed and then put some animals in there and let them control that sod as it's starting to grow in the spring. And once those seedlings get high enough that the animals are actually starting to nip those seedlings off, that's when we want to take the animals out and we want to let those seedlings get up to about six inches. At that point we can put that pasture back in our rotation cycle. Okay, I want to talk just a little bit about forage species for frost seeding. Um, the ideal legumes for frost seeding are red and white clover. They're a little bit more shade tolerant than alfalfa, and uh, they do well in frost seeding, better than alfalfa. So we would seed ideally around six to eight pounds of red clover, and somewhere around one to two pounds of white clover for frost seeding mixture in, in Kentucky. Now, the type of clover you choose is important. You want to use a certified seed or a proprietary seed that you know has good germination and, and is certified. Certified seed guarantees that what's in that bag is the genetics that you're paying for. If you use just a medium red clover, there's no guarantee on germination and there's no guarantee that it's a good variety. We're just not sure what it is because it's a variety not stated. So. So we want to make sure that we use a certified or proprietary seed when selecting clover seeds for frost seeding.